action. <laughs> so new video about suspension, well lowering suspension in particular. So Mikey and I spend a lot of our time on the phone answering all your questions about suspension and as much as we love talking to you, uh, there's not enough hours in the day to answer all the questions we get. So we thought we'd try and do a video to go through as many options that we sell um, about suspension and different options, different types of lowering, different drops and different brands that are available on the market, uh, mostly that we do. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll start off with just suspension uh, lowering springs and then we'll work our way through all the coilover options for T30, T32, T5 through to T6.1 and the various different options. Okay, so first up is H&R lowering springs. The first thing to note is that a T6.1 is different to a T5. So T5, T5.1 and T6 are all the same. T6.1, they've changed the front damper. So the spring sets you need are different. The way they're seated is different, but we'll show you about more about those as we go along. Uh, if you're looking at doing coilovers on a T6.1, it's exactly the same. They, uh, because you're changing the damper, it's irrelevant that the springs are different because you're removing all that suspension anyway. Uh, T6.1s, when lowered, also need a different drop link, which we have available on our website as well. Uh, they're a different length, but uh, again, we'll come to that later on. Right, so uh, H&R lowering springs. So there's a 40mm and a 50mm lowering version on the market. We only do the 50mm version, and you can get the 40mm from other places, but predominantly any, anything we want to we see here normally wants to go that or lower so there's two different dimensions on the market or two different weight variants so when you order them on the website which Danny will show you here how it works on the website you can see uh, two different weights depending on whether it's t26 t28 t30 or t32 but it's it's all done by the axle weight so they all look the same but there's a different version and the way to find out what your vehicle is is on a plate under your bonnet which Mikey will show you just here down here next to your airbox it's there first of all up there mine's a t28 you'll see that's the full laden capacity and then these ones here signify how much weight that you can carry um, and that's where you reference on the website on which ones you need either the heavyweight or the lighter weight ones but the options are there on there and that'll be on screen now so yours is the T28, T28 so it's the ones that are up, uh, uh, up to 1560, um, which is the lighter weight ones, but we'll choose that. Right, so the next thing worth mentioning, and we're going to use these green comfort dampers as an example, is the difference between a T30 and a T32. So these are uh, the B, uh, Bilstein uh, comfort dampers, which I'll explain in a bit more detail, but Mikey will just explain the difference if... Well, one place to figure out if your vehicle is a T28 or D32 is this how... This one under the bonnet. Yeah, but if you, you, the other way to look is... Onto your strut. So some of you might know, you might have taken your struts out in the past or you might have looked underneath. You'll see that this one is like a just a normal tube that slots into your hub. That's a T30 or anything from T26, T28, T30s like that. And then a T32 has the bolt holes where it bolts physically onto the hub itself rather than slotting inside it. So that's just T32. So T26, T28, T30 all look like this, and T32 look like this, and it's just really the way that the vehicle is bolted to the... To the um, so where the strut hub. is mounted to the hub. Yeah. So if you want to gain ride quality, so better dampening, but keep your standard OEM springs, these were a really good upgrade. They're uh, made by Bill Stein. They're the green comfort range that come from Germany, and the dampers have 15% extra inbound and rebound and compression in them so it's just OEM length, OEM size but improved comfort. Uh, that's a really good option if you want to keep your existing and standard ride height. You can then pair that with something else like the H&R springs to give you the lower ride uh, and also the extra comfort but yeah really popular they're also popular with guys that lift their van slightly to again increase their ride uh, quality without really changing, in, changing the height of the, the dampers at all. So as I mentioned earlier on the H&R springs fit on the comfort dampers and they also fit just on your OEM struts themselves. Um, some people are a bit, that bit more comfort so they'll go for these. So the next stage from the H&Rs we'll move on to the IBAC lowering springs. So these are an adjustable set. So the problem you have when you're lowering on IBAC springs is if your vehicle has any weight in the back, like if it's a camper or if it's a heavy combi or you put anything in it, it uh, sits quite a lot lower at the back. So that's where adjustable springs come in and that brings us on to probably one of our best sellers which is the IBAC adjustable lowering spring set. So you have front and rear spring and then the rear spring has an adjuster in it 
which sits like this. The adjuster always sits at the top. That's a question we get asked a lot. But yeah, the adjuster sits at the top and when you put, uh, fit your front spring, that determines how low your vehicle is going to be. And then you use your rear, the adjuster on the rear spring to wind it back up so the vehicle sits level. They've become really popular. The ride on them is really good. There's two different versions drop-wise. There's a 35 to 40 mil drop version, and then there's a shorter spring version, which is hiding behind Mikey there, which is a 50 to 60 mil that drop is version. correct, yes. So they're just different lengths of springs, same system, same uh, adjuster, but the springs are shorter, allowing you to drop the vehicle slightly more. And um, yeah, they work with OEM length struts, so you don't need to uh, worry about changing your dampers there. The yeah, ride quality is really good on them for just a standalone lowering spring, but they'll work with a green comfort dampers and they'll also work with your standard OEM dampers. One thing worth mentioning here is if it's a T6.1, you can't fit a standard H&R lowering spring because the damper is slightly different. So with these, IVAC do a T6.1 version and you'll see it comes with this extra uh, sleeve here. Uh, and that's because that's how the OEM struts are designed to take them. So yeah, we have all these in stock always, 35 to 40 mil, uh, 50 to 60 mil for both T5 right the way through to T6 and then a separate version for T6.1. Right, so that's springs alone. Now moving from springs on to coilovers, which are your best option really if, you, if budget allows you to. So we've said this many a time and lots of people will disagree with us, but my opinion on coilovers is by good quality. The cheap coilovers, we count the t countless times we've had to take off cheap coil coilovers off people's vans that are eight months, 12 months, 18 months old, and they've just fallen, to fallen apart. And it's, you, it's a false economy, you're buying it, the product twice. So if your budget is sort of sub 500 quid, buy decent quality springs and stick with your OEM struts. If you're, you're basically taking off a best part of eight to 900 quid with the springs and dampers when you take your genuine VW parts off and replace them with 300 quid coilovers. I just don't think that works for me. I'm not saying there's not a place for cheap coilovers because there definitely is. Um, if you've got an older van and you just want it to look nice, yeah, great. You know, if you're not particularly bothered about the ride quality, then yeah, again, fine. But if you've got a full camper or a new T6 or T6.1, spending a grand on a suspension might sound like a lot, but you know, in the grand scheme of things and the value of the vehicle it really isn't and the ride quality is so much better yes you'll hear people say that they've got x brand of cheap coilovers on them and they're great but they've never tried anything else is my opinion on that uh, we've tried everything there is to, to, to go around and um, you do very much get what you pay for so we don't do any cheap coilovers here um, uh, I say our starting range, we started the B14, um, but that's not to say it's a starter product, it is really good. It's been around for 10 years or more probably now, so 10 years, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's proven. Um, it's not changed in that time other than a few part numbers and densities of springs and stuff, but it's a really good product and there's no reason to change it if it does a really good job. So we probably fit more B14s than anything at the minute and have, well, have done for many years uh, and great product, we love it. So we'll just run you through that and how that works. So with the B14s, available for T25, T26, T28, T30, and then a different one for a T32. Included 6.1 as well on them. You, all the same, T5, T6, and 6.1 all use the same um, B14 kit. Yeah, so as we said before, because you're changing the damper, you don't need to worry about buying it T6.1 specific because the damper is being replaced. So the fitment and the, the way the lower spring attaches is exactly the same. You're just removing the whole lot and replacing it with a new set of coilovers. You will, in some cases, depending on how low you go, need, in t need T6.1 specific uh, drop links, which again, we have in stock anyway. Uh, but yeah, so here's your damper. Yeah, so, so you're basically adjusting your spring seat on a coil over, where your spring seat, so you can wind that up to go up and down to go down. So the drop range on these starts at 45 mil and it goes down to 70. It varies a bit on how much weight you've got in your van, but you can counteract that out both your front and rear adjusters on there. So if you've got a heavy camper, you can wind your rear, rear up or down, depending on how sort of how you want to sit on there. Um, but like I say, that's the front with your adjust, adjuster there, your rear with your rear spring. And again, adjuster always sits at the top. So B14s, in our opinion, have been the thing that we've fit for such a long time, and it's the reason why we work with Bill Stein to make the solo suspension, because we rate the product so highly. So I see occasionally on social media people bring up that they've had broken rear springs on Bill Steins. Uh, you have broken springs and everything. I've seen six months old T6s with broken springs. The beauty with Bill Stein is, is they, one, they have a two-year warranty, 
Uh, two, if they break, they replace them. Uh, like we replace them at cost, which is I don't think that's like forty quid or something for a spring. It's not expensive at all, and you only see negative reviews of things. Nobody ever is prepared to say something's great. Well, yes, on the amount of B14s that are fitted on vans across the UK, there is going to be broken springs. I bet if we fitted three thousand sets of B14s or sold three thousand sets of B14s, I can count on one hand how many rear springs that have ever broken. But whenever you see that. It's all over Facebook and everybody's been put off by them, but it just doesn't happen. Yes, it does happen occasionally, and when it does, there's steps in place to replace them, but no more than any other coilover. In fact, we get, I mean, some of the cheaper coilovers we've done in the past that we've just refused to sell because of the headache it causes us and the time taken dealing with warranty claims or them trying to avoid warranty. It's why we're so confident in the B14 product and why it's still the best or the most common choice or the most popular choice now, the same as it has been for the last eight, nine years. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say, then. Yeah. So, something that gets uh, picked up on quite a lot if people are fitting B14s themselves is they use this nut. This nut, the nylon nut, and it comes on every single strut you'll buy, every single coilover strut you'll buy, they're all the same. They come with a nylon top nut. And this is designed to stop just there. They use the nylon to stop. And that stops in transit. Is that your delivery man? Because we know what they're like in this country, uh, throwing your boxes the end's getting damaged on your threads. So the nut that comes on the coil over is just a transportation nut. The nut that you should use is the one that comes on your OEM shock, which is longer, it's not nylock, and that goes on there on top of your top mount itself. All the way down. The problem you get with fitting the nylock is they're, they're shallower, they're about three mil shallower, two or three mil shallower. And this causes the gap at the top to be a lot tighter between the rubber here and the rubber that's in uh, your engine bay area. Um, and the sway when going over bumps over time could cause that to fracture and, or snap or create a knock because the, the gap's not right. Um, so again, just avoid using the nylock. So next up, the new kid on the block for us is their twin monotube project coilover set so I say new to us they've had these in Germany for a couple of years and they absolutely love them and rave about them so we've uh, started stocking them here this is something that we've done with chili jam campers uh, so there's a couple of options we're here you've got the standard drop which is similar to a b14 which is 45 ish to 70 uh, which they call their sensitive range you'll see there and then they do their teeth which deep, means deep in, deep, deep in Germany, there you go. Low version is 50 to 90, dampers are the same length, uh, but their springs are different densities and different lengths on the tooth. So this is a twin adjust kit, so what that basically means is it's adjustable height wise and it's adjustable dampening, so the front and the rear damper can be adjusted, so you can adjust the dampening rate on these. So these are really highly thought of in Germany, we're really impressed with the ones we've fitted so far. Um, slightly more than B14s but really good product I think they'll be really popular as and when they more people are aware of them and they get spoken about on social media but um, yeah really really pleased with them and uh, it's definitely a, a new alternative for us in the UK so one thing worth m mentioning with the twin adjust project is you can't hub mod it you'll see here there's a lip so it can't be hub modded like you can with uh, B14s or B14 converts but yeah just worth bearing that in mind but if you think you're gonna want to go that bit lower go for the, the low kit instead of the sensitive kit. We've kind of done this in value, so we've gone cheapest up to more expensive, and then the best at the end obviously, is, as always. So, Solos, so it's our own product that we've built with Bill Stein. You love anybody that follows us will know all about Solos anyway, they're amazing. So the story behind Solos is originally when we started working with Bill Stein on this product, we wanted to make something that was lower because we've got we were quite involved with the low down guys and we did quite a lot of um, air, air suspension on our vehicles and we were really we were quite well known for making stuff low. But to make stuff low and comfortable was really tough. So we started to work with Bill Stein on this uh, product, so the Solo Suspension Kit. Uh, and I don't really think we realised how popular it was going to be. So originally the, the, the kind of the brief was let's make something that can go really low and still be comfortable. But I don't think what we were really expecting was people would have solos fitted on the highest setting and then exactly and how comfortable they really were then so solos on their highest setting are about 100 mil drop out the box now 
people that we weren't expecting to want to go low had them fitted and raved about how good the quality is and it really is they're so popular right now bill stein build quality loads of new tech in there to make them uh roscoe out of the way roscoe thank you you're in shot roscoe <laughs> move along <laughs> so, so yeah uh, ride quality is exceptional the ride quality is really good low but the ride quality is amazing when it's up the only thing is you are getting a 100 mil drop at the absolute highest yeah so um you you are low low so you can't get a t32 load rated wheel and tire in a 20 and still have solos but there's other options for that now now mikey's van here you'll see in the background obviously is on solos low that they're set really low with some extra modding and some extra cutting to make it sit that low that thing still rides amazing even though it's that low but you can have them set high so we'll put some pictures on the screen now of how a uh, uh, van on solos fitted high looks uh, 100 mil isn't still massive but it can still be comfortable but you do have to be aware that you struggle to get a t32 load rated wheel and tire but yeah solos big fans of these when we've got stock which is awkward at the minute because they sell so quickly they are uh, as good as it gets for us as long as you're comfortable with going that much lower so from there again a relatively a new relatively new product we have the b14 comfort kit so bill Stein have taken what they learned from making the amazing b14 and created the b14 comfort so we did a video on this recently so the b14 comfort is same dimensions as the b14 but they it's a comfort so it's same technology they use in the green damper that we talked about over there earlier on so you've got in, improved inbound and rebound by 15% and improved body roll by 15%. But they've also teamed that with an IBAC spring. Yeah, so we fitted these to our TSI demo recently, just, not, just before we sold it. Uh, Bill Stein in Germany sent us a set directly. You've probably seen the video, it'll be in a, in a, on our channel if not. And we really did rate it. Yeah, so after the video, we took it for a short, short test drive and we kind of were like, yeah, that's an improvement. But after we put the video up, we'd had a chance to have a good drive in it. And it really is an improvement. They are noticeably different from the b14s um, yes they're quite a bit more money but again if you spend 30 40 50 grand on a camper it's worth spending the extra money to get the best there is and in, in our opinion right now b14 comforts uh, are as good as it gets uh, two-year warranty same as you do with the standard b14s parts readily available um, so these springs on this as i mentioned before are iBac. these iBac springs are exactly the same springs that come on the uh, twin monotube project same part number same everything iBac are well known for making really good quality products and also the longevity of the products i've got no doubt that these springs are going to be you know they'll, they'll go on 10 years or more they're, they're they're really good you can just tell by the feel of them they're a really good quality but really good quality and in my mind if you can afford it spend it it's worth the money if you're looking for that kind of level of drop so that hopefully has been helpful and just a quick overview of the suspension range that we do. So just a few things just to recap on. If you're lowering your van and it's just a standard van or a standard combi or you're not going to be carrying a lot of weight, then H&Rs are absolutely fine. If you think the back's going to have any kind of weight in it or it is a camper, it will definitely sit lower on the back with H&R springs. They're not really designed to take all that extra weight. Even if you have a T30 and you buy, or T28, sorry, and you buy the T32 springs, it's not going to make the back sit any better. It will sit lower at the back. It's well worth looking at spending that extra bit of money on adjustable spring sets. The iBac stuff is brilliant, fit loads of it, big fans of it, makes your van sit really nice. You, if you don't want to go extremely low, you can go for the 30mm version. If you want to go that bit lower, then there's a 50 to 60 mil version, which still isn't really low, but will allow you to level the vehicle up. If budget allows, definitely look at coilovers. Again, my opinion is good quality coilovers if you have the budget or good quality springs if you don't have the budget. Uh, B14's great, new kid on the block, the twin monoshoe project is going to be huge and really really popular, love it, love the quality of it and again you've got the, the five year warranty on the springs. Solos if you want to go that much, that little bit lower, even if you don't want to go silly low and you still want to just have a 100mm drop, uh, Solos on the high setting are fabulous, if you want to go really low and still have a good ride like Mike is, Solos on the lowest setting or even with extra cutting, still fabulous and then the B14 Comforts, absolutely great kit. You get what you pay for, it's an expensive product, but if you tell them the ride, you can tell them the feel of the product, how well made it is. Yeah, so all available on our website. We try and keep everything in stock, and we're pretty good at keeping everything in stock for next day delivery, uh, UK anyway. We do ship globally, but uh, next day pretty much throughout the UK. We do obviously offer a fitting service here. We currently run like a two to three month, we booked it for about two to three months at any one time, but um, occasionally we get cancellations, so drop us an email if you're interested or if there's any questions or if you want to um, see if there's a cancellation space but if not 
free next day delivery. Um, if you're looking at something as simple as springs, it doesn't really need a specialist. I mean, it's no different to your van fed and its MOT on a broken spring. Your local garage doesn't need to be a transport specialist and they'll be fine fitting a, a spring set or even an adjustable spring set. We, over the years, have kind of worked out how heavy a vehicle is, so how we want to set the adjuster when it leaves the ramp and occasionally they'll have to go back on the ramp and have an adjustment, but that's all your local garage will have to do. Possibly take it back off and adjust it. Call over wise, it's well worth getting a specialist or ask your garage whether they're comfortable with doing it. We do see the odd telltale issue or people have problems with knocking and stuff later on if the garage doesn't really know what they're doing, but it is normally just things like using the wrong top nut or fitting the adjuster on the rear at the bottom quite often, not using the dust covers, you need to put the genuine dust covers back on when you're putting um, B14s on or the twin monotube project stuff. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of people out there that are more than capable of doing it and if you're struggling to find somebody locally there's a good chance we might know somebody who can point you in the right direction of. Mikey will just talk to you about adjustment if you're having coilovers. So if once you've had them fitted, wherever you have them fitted, you want it to sit higher or lower or you know it's not balanced, um, Mikey will just kind of run through what we would suggest you do when it comes to adjusting. The front are very easy to adjust. As I said earlier, you crack off the nut, there's a locking nut on there wind up to go up and down to go down but on the front you can norm once it's jacked up you can normally reach around the behind or around behind the wheel or over the top of the wheel and you'll see it's go down um, so that's quite easy but then on the rear because this sits quite high up in the chassis leg you have to drop the lower shot bolts off so they're 21 mils sometimes you need to take the wheels off to do them as well depending on how wide your wheels are um, so it drops down enough and then you wind obviously again up or down depending which way you want to go on that so another thing to worth mentioning with solos is because they are whoops, 100 mil drop at their highest setting whenever we're fitting them here we would always cut your bump stops down so you cut them to the length of the adjuster you fit the rear adjuster and then what's left that sticks out the bottom of the bump stop shave that down uh, or shave and then bump stop nipple as we like to call it uh, and we would always reroute your abs lines or your rear brake lines at the back just to uh, stop it from ever getting trapped. So that's standard practice if we're fitting them here. It's an easy job to do, anybody that's fitting them should know how to do that, but I would recommend, if you're fitting solos, even on the highest setting, that I would do that cutting. Possibly on the twin monotube, the lower version, it may be worth doing that as well. It doesn't cause any harm to the vehicle, but it just saves you uh, bottoming out. So whenever Mikey's fitting coilovers here, there's quite often a few, or people ring in and say, what else am I going to need? Well, we'll only replace things if they need doing, but Mikey will just explain some common parts that go. If you go into a garage, it may be worth stocking up on these bits. They're not particularly expensive, but it's worth having there uh, in case they are needed. These are the common things that we notice when changing the coilovers that may have broken or started to wear, uh, but only if necessary. Yeah, the things that might wear, so stuff that you might uh, wanna have with you, yeah. yeah. Three things we notice is um, cracks around here on the top mounts. Once once the uh, struts are out normally, you'll see it around there. You can normally hear it, a bit of creaking, maybe a bit of dull thudding, um, is when the, the top mounts just wearing um, due to swaying around. So they crack, so then people normally replace for the Milos, the not rated um, top mount with the bearing plates and everything. You can just buy the tops, but normally once they're out, you don't know how worn your bearing is, you might as well replace the lot. Second thing is drop links. We don't often see these need changing. Clean them up a bit, WD-40 them when removing them. You tend to get the nut off with a bit of work, but sometimes you do need to change them. They're not expensive either, um, but you can replace them singularly if one's gone or two gone if you change them both if you need. So if you've got a T6.1, there's a different length drop link that's only really relevant if your vehicle is going really quite low. low on them not really you know like kind of b14s all the way out all the way down would probably need a different length drop link uh so yeah it's worth getting those as well are they also available on the website and the reason why is the anti-roll bar on the t6.1 is quite different yeah, because quite of the, different. the subframe's different on them so. yeah because of the position of the power steering pump mainly so uh, yeah it's worth buying a set of them saves you getting any issues in the future uh, and then finally, the other thing that needs replacing quite often, or the most common thing we have to replace when we're doing B14s or coilovers is? Lower rear spring rubber. So on the lower wishbone, the rear, where the rear spring sits, it normally wears in there due to the movement of the wishbone constantly. Um, we can stop these as well. Normally replace them in a pair, um, but they're not too expensive, but it's worth doing every time because 
we see them gone after about two year old vans and stuff like that but yeah they're the only things that you really should notice uh, need changing or if you've got kind of thud thudding or knocking Freaking or noises like yeah. yeah it's normally one of those few things so the other thing that we get asked quite a lot is fitting times so from springs through to coilovers and mikey will expect being this he's the pro and he fits more than anybody he'll explain time wise so they're all pretty similar you've got to take out the the same things for all of them so you've got to take out the shocks for all of them so the timing is very similar obviously there's some adjustments on the coilovers to be made so that takes a bit more time it's about three to four hours some people do it quicker some pros people that are used to working on tools some people take a bit longer it can be harder with seized up bolts um, older vans um, the early t30s or t26s t28s were on the front hubs they were actually captive uh, or threaded hubs so it wasn't nut and bolt on the front they were threaded directly into there and quite often we see them seize quite often we have to drill them out for people and replace the bolts so they can take the time to be honest with you so they can, I mean that can literally they, be a day's that work. That can be a day's work if you're having to drill out uh, snap bolts or seize bolts or heating up bolts because you've got to be really careful with heating up because obviously the, the shock, shock absorbers or dampers are filled with gases and oils and you don't want to be putting too much heat through them because you get the risk of blowing them up. So we think, what's that, 2005 and earlier? Yeah, yeah, something like that. We don't often, we've not seen it on the later ones, definitely not seen it on a T6 or a T5.1, it's the early pre-face lift. Some of them, if they've had suspension work previously, they've already been drilled yeah, out and been nut and bolted. Out. Or if you're lucky enough, someone's taken the bolts out and greased them up for you when they changed the spring in the past. So that's if you're really lucky. Though. That's early, early, early T5s yeah, really yeah. the only thing that have yeah. that problem. Yeah, T32 to take less time. You've not got to mess around trying to split the hub on the fronts to uh, remove the, well, the sleeved strut that's in there. Um, but the T32s just bolt off and they're straight out, so they take a bit less time. So that can save you about half an hour? Can save about half an hour, yeah, maybe a bit longer. Cool. It's worth noting, some people do, don't know, or it's rare that you see one, but it's four motion. The, every, everything that we discussed today will fit and work with a four motion. They do take a bit longer to fit, don't they? They do take a bit longer to fit. It's a bit of a nightmare to get past the drive shafts on the back when you're taking the spring in and out, but it is possible. Right, so hopefully that's answered most of your questions and that can help you make the decision on what suspension you want to put on your van. So this video really was just dedicated to lowering your van from 30, 40 mil right the way through to 100 and, well, 185 if you have all the extra work like Mikey's uh, van. Um, we will do another uh, video in the future on lift. We have a new lift suspension kit coming to us soon, so we'll do a video uh, based on that. But that for now is pretty much anything I hope we've not missed anything. Kind of gone over, over everything. Question that I get asked daily, but I think that covers anything. Anything we have missed, please feel free to comment below uh, and we'll try and answer questions as and when. All these products are on our website. We'll try and list, we'll link you below to the uh, lowering section on our website. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Share this video with anybody that might be thinking about lowering their van or that sits lower at the back and they want to even it up or they're going to turn it into a camper or anything suspension related you think it might help them. Share the video, give us a subscribe and we'll continue to make some more videos we think are helpful. Thanks for watching. New hat colour, what do you think? It's a one-off just for me for my fat head but I don't know might make put it into production.